So good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me um, and welcome to the 2023 Open Simulator Community Conference. Um, I'm Joyce Betancourt, co-founder of the nonprofit Avacon, or as many of you know me by my avatar name here on stage, Rhiannon Chatnoir. Uh, this is our 11th year, which is pretty amazing. Um, and uh, we're delighted to open up with our Open Simulator Core Developer Spotlight. And um, we are, Open Simulator itself is celebrating 17 years, which is also another amazing number. Um, um, and the first commit was on January 31st, 2007. And uh, the many developers working on the open source, multi-platform, multi-user, 3D application server software that is running this conference grid and behind the scenes of hundreds of public and many, many, many more private virtual grid environments. Um, and so we're very thankful for Open Simulator. Um, I will put into chat a video. Uh, we created basically a visualization of the of the development of Open Simulator in the past year. And I'll put it into the local chat here and then you guys will be able to see that. Um, it's three minutes long, I, uh, you can watch it afterwards, but um, it shows just the kind of the impact and all the work that it's put into it. In the last year alone, we've, um, uh, we were like, we've reported or the, the report that you'll see in that is up to 180 co contributors who, who throughout Open Simulator's development past and, and present who've created over 497,000, uh, 4, sorry, 854 lines of code through the years, um, through those uh, 17 years. So the equivalent of over 134 years of human effort. So that's pretty uh, amazing a, th a thing to think of. Um, and uh, uh, we are more than thankful, of course, for the core developers who uh, allow many of us as users and grid owners to be able to kind of have these spaces. So. With that, I will turn it over to, oh, one quick thing. Of course, I wanted to also thank all the uh, sponsors who you'll see up on the, the posters, uh, their logos, um, and also thank, um, of course, the core developers, but also thank all the presenters who will be here this um, over this course of this weekend and the many volunteers and organizers that have worked uh, with us to make this all happen. So thank you as well. Um, and you'll be kind of hearing for uh, through myself and Lear, who is also the co-chair of the conference with me. And with that, I will turn it over to Cynthia Colloin or Lear Lobo as she is on the stage. So thank you. Hey, thank you, Rhiannon. And hello, everyone. Welcome to our OSCC. I want to be um, to wish you all a great conference and to let you know how thankful we are to our core developers. I'm up here with some of the most wonderful people in the world, and I'd like to introduce them. Krista Lopez is a professor within the Department of Informatics, Donald Bren School of Information and Computer Sciences at the University of California, Irvine, and a core open simulator developer. Krista developed the HyperGrid protocol, which allows users of one open simulator grid to travel to another grid server with their identity, avatar appearance, and inventory remaining persistent. Meli Milland is a Open Simulator core developer, and Melanie has been an active contributor to the virtual world software in general and Open Simulator in particular. She has been involved in a number of virtual world projects, including creating with a team of up to 12 developers her own spin on the Open Simulator software, which powered the Avenation grid. Much of the grid's code when shared back to the core code was the base for many of the new Open Simulator 0.9 update features. Yubit Yumarov, Open Simulator Core Developer. Yubit is currently a lead core developer for Open Simulator, and he has been working on the project since 2012. He was instrumental in coding and implementing in the Open Simulator code base many of the updates that were part of Open Simulator 0.9 through 0.922, and works on resolving issues and developing the upcoming releases. Kevin Cozens, Andrew Hellershanks, is an Open Simulator core developer. Kevin has been a member of the Open Simulator core development team since March of 2014, and he created or maintains several add-on modules, including the Open Sim Search and Open Sim Profile modules, which are useful within the Open Simulator project. 
Please check out the website found at theconference.opensimulator.org for more info, speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. That's at conference.opensimulator.org slash schedule. The conference is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during this session, please share them in world in the text chat or local chat, or send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome everyone. Let's get begin the session. Let's open with the wonderful developer work from our core devs and code enthusiasts who work hard to track down bugs and examine potential features. If you have a question in the audience, please post it in the text chat. I have it up as we speak. So let's see. Um, why don't we start with where everyone is today and what you're working on? What are your current interests? Um, who would like to begin? Krista? Sure. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's it's great to be here. The you know that it's that time of year again. Um, I have been relatively um, out of the loop for the past year. Um, I, there's a lot of other things that, that got higher priority in my life, and in particular this past quarter, I have been out of California and also on a sabbatical, so I'm really out of the loop. I have contributed much to Open Simulator, other than paying the bills every month for the server hosting costs, which I must say it's a pleasure to be able to continue to support the community in that in that way. Well, that's um, important, uh, yeah. and we're thankful for it. So you're on sabbatical. Well, that's fun, wonderful. That's a great time to recharge. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> yes. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so well. yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm here. I'm looking forward to hear what what everything what everyone is working on and uh, the new developments. I mean, there was a a big hype of the metaverse uh, the past couple of years or so with Meta getting into some sort of metaverse that nobody really knows what that was. I think the hype now is over, or at least overshadowed by the next hype of AI. Um, but you know, we're here. It's been 11 years since we started this conference series and we're still here, which is pretty amazing. We're all 11 years older, but thank God our, our avatars did not get any one day old. So that's great. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you know, speaking of this, we, and we appreciate your support. Let's face it, without the server and everything that you do, we wouldn't have a, an easy place to host our, our content. And that reminds me, Melanie, you know, this year we were so thankful for your support and and i i thought uh why don't you tell us what you're working on now uh well not much open sim actually um uh, mostly my involvement with open sim at this time is always great um uh, keeping the asset servers alive and improving and um i've just uh yesterday um spoken to dan who has said that this is the most stable asset service that os chris has had in like ever so um that's one thing and then i still have on the back burner um the um little project for um, creating a new sl voice that can deal with things other than rivox I would need help with that project, though. It's not something that I can tackle alone because I have to um, work for a living and that doesn't leave me enough time for a, uh, a large scale uh, multi platform scope project. Well, thank you and thank you for bringing up voice because of course at the core dev meetings we've been talking about it and other options and we always need new, new information new ideas and that's one of the areas that we're thankful for when you come to conference and you you energize us with a lot of different ways of thinking about these problems and how to solve them so Ubit, what are you working on these days uh, hello everyone, <laughs> nice to be here, glad to see you all. Well, I'm in the open sim area, I'm been working, trying to make possible that we meet here again next year, <laughs> keeping open sim up to date and um, running. 
Hello? Did you hear me? Oh, I did hear Hello. you. <laughs> <laughs> I muted in between those, so you don't hear me. Um, oh, okay. You know, you know, I don't think people have any idea how hard all of you work. You're so mm -hmm. modest, uh, and I don't just mean what you do this year, but I mean all of this infrastructure that makes a, our world possible, right? And um, uh, why don't you tell us, I know you've been working really hard behind the scenes. There have been commits this year. What have those commits been about? And Andrew, I'm going to get to you in just one moment. So uh, did you want to mention one of the commits? Well, a lot of them are still about the move into to support .NET 6.0 because, as you know, Microsoft decided to stop the support of .NET Framework 4 and Mono and moved on into .NET 5. That is actually now .NET 8, but from that we are still targeting .NET 6 because mm -hmm. it's a nice platform, better to fix some issues that .NET 6 add, and the .NET 5 add, add for us. So, still in the migration, that sadly means that we lost some things, namely support for the 32-bit CPUs, Intel and AMD class of CPUs. Well, they were still nice, but okay. Everyone is dropping support for them, and .NET, of course, .NET 6 does not support them, so that was a loss. We need to use modern CPUs. And um, another one is that uh, it lost several components that made us lose something like, for example, our main script engine that was X-Engine. Uh, good luck that we had replaced it already by, or we had high engine already in condition to take over. But, well, but that was one of the losses. And also now people need to install the new .NET runtime, even in Windows, while in the, with the .NET um, framework 4.0, it was already installed. Nevertheless, it is working and we take benefit of the improvement code and the, perfor the improved performance of uh, that .NET 6 uh, and .NET you know, overall does provide us. And uh, about new features, well, the, we are currently we're trying to see what that thing called um, physical branding materials are about. And um, as we see it in the Firestorm version 7, and um, so far it is working. Of course, um, that's still, uh, I think Firestorm is still in an early the implementation of the debt, so we'll see where it goes. But so far it's working, and maybe the main feature, uh, <clears throat> our beautiful shining feature of um, our next release of uh, uh, OpenSIM 9.3.0. Okay. Ah, hey, it. that's exciting. Okay. Oh, well, let's get right back to that in just a moment. Uh, let me introduce Andrew. And Andrew, what are you currently working on? Yeah, good morning, everyone. And uh, yeah, say 11 years and Wow, we're just three years away from two decades on uh, open simulator development. To say it. It's amazing how time has flown. I realize uh, how long I've been uh, kind of involved in one way or another with uh, with the project. Um, I, uh, one of my sort of day jobs I get, I'm involved with uh, embedded systems work. I do work on electronics and computers, so I'm doing some work for a, a company, uh, just a a number of miles west of me, and uh, they deal with a dedicated computer uh, system that is involved in monitoring and controlling uh, in uh, CNC machines, uh, like basically machines that make stuff in uh, in pl at various uh, manufacturing plants. My uh, one of those side projects lately has been uh, working on a uh, a small little computer system, kind of uh, because I have an interest in vintage computing. One of the best 8-bit microprocessors uh, is basically a 6809 processor and so I built myself a little board uh, with that processor that fits into an Altoids tin and I'm currently uh, implementing a, a fourth like language for it and I've got it running I'm just uh, currently in the stages of debugging um, I mostly run Linux and uh, one of the issues I had, of course, is that when it comes to C Sharp, I usually use a program called Mono Develop to help me, you know, help me to be able to browse and make changes to the uh, to C Sharp based code. And of course, that project was uh, 
dropped. Uh, it's being replaced by dot develop, but I haven't been able to get dot develop compiled and up and running. But just recently, I did manage to uh, get some other packages where I went, I think, more to Microsoft to install some stuff, and that's somehow wound up giving me back mono develop. So I'm back being able to uh, work with the code base uh, and other C sharp um, projects uh, again now. Hey, thanks. Well, that sounds fascinating. So, um, speaking of command control, communications, things like that, you know, Melanie's point earlier about voice, we had a message come in and, and the, here's the question, and I'll let one of you tackle um, where should we should go with this one. What do you think we need to work on to find a solution for voice and world? What would you like to see possible? Well, I can tell you what I have been up to if that maybe kickstarts the uh, conversation. Wonderful. I uh, found that uh, the combination of uh, mumble murmur is uh, one of the uh, best suited ones because it has a spatial audio implementation. I have a, um, uh, a low latency audio engine that I have written in pure C sharp which actually um, implements the bits of protocol that are needed for spatial voice in uh, Murmur because um, the original um, open source uh, C Sharp uh, library that they have on their page doesn't implement that portion. It also doesn't implement channels properly. So I've added all these things and um, it basically would need to be uh, hooked into the interfaces for SL voice, but that's something I have not had the time to research. And also the code still needs a lot of cleanup. Well, that's wonderful, though, because, you know, we, we've had a lot of conversation about it, but we weren't sure quite how to get started. So that's great to know. So a low latency C sharp engine, um, did, is this for a particular project or is this something you have passion for that you're developing on your own? Oh, um, uh, I have a history of um, um, taking part in the uh, Jack Audio Connection Kit project back in the days which is a low latency engine in C++ that is uh, written for use by musicians on their uh, digital audio workstations. So I took the concepts from that, but not the code, and um, uh, rewrote it in uh, C Sharp using a number of ready-made components, of course, and based it on the um, open source C Sharp client for uh, Murmur. And um, that has actually uh, been uh, tested with uh, quite a few users and um, has eventually, after fixing a few bugs, um, passed these tests. And it would be at a point where um, it could be taken over and developed further. Um, I don't have the time to do it by myself. No, uh, we appreciate that though. That sounds wonderful. So um, if anyone's interested in voice or um, can they reach out to you over IRC or um, how might they get in touch? Uh, well, yes, I'm always on the, on the IRC. Um, you have to mention me by name, then um, it'll go ping and um, I'll see it when I see it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> because I'm, 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 I'm like so far off most of these people's time zone that um, it would be difficult to uh, actually catch me awake. Oh, I understand. I understand. Well, we only have a minute longer. Um, and so uh, before we move on, please realize we are going to have another session with our core devs and the crowd funders and speakers over the lunch break. So we'll be have a VIP session to discuss this some more. If anyone has questions or comments for our core developers, please direct them uh, directly to them. Um, Ubit, so you mentioned 0 0.9.3, right? And that you said that has PBR in it. Is that, uh, did I understand you correctly? Yes, it's, it's at the moment it is working uh, almost uh, Everything it's working with the fire with the latest Firestorm Alpha version. 
there are of course a few problems even um, the, the that first storm is still not finished it's still in, in early development uh it's not it's under well it's called in name alpha for a reason not even beta <laughs> uh, and um, on our side we still have some things to do like uh, actually i think we it already propagate into ors but for example our map does not do about them so we still have some work to do but for now it looks great you've seen it <laughs> i have yeah. i have yeah. i'm just okay. acting like i have it <laughs> Uh, there's been a lot of hard work behind that getting That's and for those of you yes. who are new to PBR just so you know it's the ability to see shiny and metal and reflections and just all kinds of cool content well I want to thank our core development team for all your hard work we're excited to have you with us and kicking off our conference and and uh, and you're right the hype with the metaverse Krista it's still there but you're right AI is on the rise and of course it's the conversation this year isn't it so um Thank you to our core developers for their support past and present and for open simulator. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org slash schedule. Following this session, the next session will begin at 7.30 a.m. in this keynote region, and it's entitled OpenSim on a Bigger Scale. We encourage you to visit the OSCC 23 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our core development team and thank you to our audience. It's a community conference. Welcome.